Welcome to Sinful Sundays in this state powder room to ladies and libations. I am Dawn Garcia and this is... Hi, I'm Gia St. George. And this is a show all about cocktails and playfulness and just two hot girls teaching you how to make drinks. Today we are going to be making a mold wine, which is a really, really interesting cocktail. So it's perfect for the holidays because it warms the soul, it's very passionate, and a little sultry. And, uh, and Gia is going to tell us a step-by-step -step way of how we make this and a little bit of the background. All right, so first of all, uh, mold wine goes back centuries. And basically, the basis of a mold wine is that it's been brought to a boil and you're adding spices to it. And the reason for it is because it enhances medicinal abilities. It also just creates more flavor. It also kills some bacteria. Back in the old days, they didn't bottle it. They kept it in the barrels and it was kept in room temperature, it wasn't kept in a, you know, in a warehouse or anything like that. You know, so time has definitely evolved Thank since goodness. then. So with this mold wine, it is a very, very simple mold wine. Great for the holidays, you can batch it, it'll serve to up to six to eight people, you know, and so you can either use a slow cooker or you can put it in a pot and boil it, simmer it for an hour. If you're using a slow cooker, six to eight hours, low heat, and you should be good. So and depending we have, on your day. And we will have the recipe, by the way, online. Yes. Um, but I just want to add too, so for me, a very like nostalgic smell, she's gonna start doing my icing, sorry. Um, a very nostalgic smell for me is star anise and cinnamon during the holidays. Like I actually boil on the stove. I take water, put it on the stove, and add some cinnamon sticks and star anise and a little nutmeg, and I just let that make the house smell really good. It makes me feel like I'm not a California and like I'm somewhere far in the back, <laughs> back east or midwest where they actually have seasons. Or even um, in the mountains. Yes, I don't mean to complain about our perfect weather that sounds so pathetic. But but yeah, it's kind of my my one way of just going back to being a kid and just really tasting something great. So, um, so what she's doing here now is she's actually boiled and processed and, and really let the mold wine simmer. Um, we do use a Cabernet, so she can explain a little yes. bit about that. And you can use your favorite Cabernet. Um, I'm assuming that it doesn't really matter as long as it it's kind of your matter. choice. You want a medium bodied wine. You don't want to typically, if you do a Pinot Noir, it's a little bit too uh, light bodied and too light in flavor. You kind of want to use a Cabernet, a Zin would be perfectly fine, or even a red blend. Mm -hmm. Something that will really mix very well with the spices and what's already kind of being aged in, totally in the it. barrel. So this mold wine, like I said, is super simple. You just take one whole bottle of wine. You're gonna uh, add a little bit of honey. This is using the star anise, a little pomegranate. This palma, which is incredible. This, our sponsored spirit, palma liqueur. A little bit is added to this uh, mold wine as well. Bring it to a boil. And you're just gonna simmer it for an hour and a pot. So if you're sick, instead of a hot toddy, try mold wine. Try mold wine. <laughs> and it's good hot or on ice. And I've had it both ways, so. actually. This is the first time I've tried it. Ice, so. <laughs> Cheers. Mm. Mm. So, and if you want, uh, there's no, in the original recipe, there's no allspice. You can add Sailor Jerry, like a spice drum, if you want to add a little spice, or just a couple of uh, nuggets of allspice as well, just to spice it up a little bit. No, I think I'm just going to keep drinking. <laughs> For me, as the person who actually writes about all this stuff, um, I the the immediate burst of citrus is really at the forefront of this, and then there's sort of the undertone yeah, of spice sense. from the anise. Yeah, we're gonna just let everybody have some. So if you didn't come tonight, you're totally missing out on free alcohol. Um, but it's your fault. <laughs> but anyway, it's, you. it's um. It's really actually a beautiful. I, I think this would be good. Like I said, I've had it both ways. Um, and this is really refreshing, so I, I think that you could totally pull this off in the spring as well. Oh, totally. Um, yeah. But this would definitely be really good by a fire, nice and cozy and warm. Um, and that's that little that little hint of orange is what really makes it. And then the pomegranate, that tartness, it's sort of a nice little balance of flavor. So anyways, um, we're going to serve everybody. And I know this was a little bit of a shorter segment, but we just want to <laughs> say happy holidays. Happy and, holidays. Uh, make it. God, I feel like it's happy Hanukkah, Hanukkah Kwanzaa. <laughs> Let's just celebrate the fact that everybody is together and that for once, in a moment at least during the winter, we get to pause for a second and be around people that we love and um, 
kind of embody the passion that makes us full of life. So whatever that is for you, just take that in and, uh, and cheers to you. Cheers. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah. And thanks for uh, joining by the way. Simple Sundays. A little naughty Sundays. Cheers. <laughs>